Welcome to the Tim Runs His Mouth podcast. I'm Tim Young. That's uh, that's my name right there. Tim Runs His Mouth. Look at that. Tim Young. And I want to thank our sponsor, as I do every show, ScarsDirect.com. If you want to go get all of your scar needs, uh, go to ScarsDirect.com. You can go and uh, pick up all of your high-end sticks, your daily smokers, your cutters, your humidors, everything you possibly want. Uh, and then they usually have crazy discounts and all sorts of other fun stuff over at ScarsDirect.com. We don't have any kind of like slash Tim or any kind of codes like that because why? Well, I, don't, I don't know. Why would we want to track how all these ads do? Uh, welcome to this weekend edition of the show. Uh, we've got some stuff to talk about here. Let's start right off the bat. Uh, Joe Biden, shockingly, not getting a bump for his uh, State of the Union address. Nobody cared. I don't, you know, they they put up some number of like 30 million or something people watch. I don't, I don't buy that for a second, by the way. I don't think, I think that they have to stretch and say that uh, 30 million people watched when they add up all of the, uh, all of the views on every live stream known to man on top of what watched on television. Cause there was, uh, again, nobody has the patience for this anymore. Uh, at one point, Joe Biden walked in, it was like 45 minutes of him walking in, taking selfies with people. But uh, this from our friends at Newsmax, uh, Joe Biden, State of the Union address wasn't well received by most Americans, according to four polls taken following the speech. Uh, and that's uh, by an article in The Federalist. So why don't we just go to The Federalist? How about that? I like it when they like quote other articles. You ever see that? And you're like, oh, I'm reading an article about an article. Oh, mm. Well, that's how science works. Uh, <laughs> four or five polls conducted since Biden's fiery Appearance show the president still underwater among voters. Biden delivered an annual State of the Union address one week ago, but considering the State of the Union is abysmal, polls show voters weren't impressed. All right, where are the polls at? Here we go. According to Forbes, Harris X polled more than 2,000 registered voters from March 8th to 10th. 59% said Biden's speech did more to divide than unify Amer America compared to 41% who said otherwise. Just 37% of those surveyed approve of uh, Biden's job as president, uh, which is one point below his aggregate approval rating maintained by 538. So listen, uh, nobody likes what he's doing. Everything's crappy in this country. Nobody likes Joe Biden to begin with, and everything continues to fail. In contrast to Biden's performance, Trump and former President Barack Obama saw post-speech bumps in their perspective 2015, 2016, and 2018 State of the Union addresses, according to Gallup. And then they go into talking about all of the other things that he said. There's Biden. Uh, he just he I, when he walked in, I don't know if you guys saw it. I had to watch it. Uh, so, you know, hopefully you saw a little bit of it uh, to suffer with me. But when Biden walked in, he looked as clueless as ever. He was shocked by Marjorie Taylor Greene. And then, of course, it's like uh, all of the sights and smells uh, that he could possibly try to. God, those ears are weird uh try to take in and he looked very very confused when he was walking in to uh his state of the union address uh and other state of the union news pull this up uh the gold star dad who yelled out the name of his son who died in afghanistan uh still hasn't had charges dropped against him as if we thought that the democrats would ever give leniency to any of their political opponents. <clears throat> Gold Star dad arrested at Biden's State of the Union says charges haven't been dropped against him. The Gold Star father arrested for heckling President Biden at the State of the Union says he still has not had charges dropped against him. He's not standing down from calling the president out, being 100% at fault for his son's death. So here's the deal. Oh, God. By the way, I, I saw the picture flow there, and I thought it was... Uh, Dylan Mulvaney for a second. I'm so used to seeing Dylan Mulvaney's face everywhere. If this guy, I'm not going to, I'm going to butcher his last name. Steve Nakui. Steve Nakui. Uh, if he had yelled something about pro-abortion or, you know, shut down Israel or, you know, uh, Republicans should rot in hell, uh, he would have been probably immediately released. We all know how, we know how this game works now. We know how this is going. Uh, you know, also when people are arrested for screaming, like the environmental people, when they're when they scream in Congress, they get they get released right away. It's a twenty five dollar fine. I think it might be up to fifty dollars now. Inflation. Uh, but uh, it's a I believe it's still a twenty five dollar fine. And they just let them go right away. So this guy was arrested for yelling at the State of the Union address. 
And uh, I, I wouldn't expect Charlie. I'm surprised they didn't throw him in the old gulag. For They got to send him to re-education camp for everything that he... Uh, uh, that everything that he, you know, for his, 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 dare he oppose the regime and say anything negative about Biden. But so the uh, gold star dad still uh, hasn't had charges dropped. I, I'm trying to see here what the fine is or if there's any, cr- any prison time. You think that would be at the top of this article, and and I'm reading this along. Why would I show prep? There's no such thing as show prep here. It doesn't say. It it's, I it's it's a fine. I think it's just a fine. But we'll see. I'm surprised they haven't thrown him in the gulag. Uh big news this week, though. Forget that one. Forget that story right now, because our big story, I think, and I think what's really funny. You believe this interview with Don Lemon. And Elon Musk. Now, I want to make sure the audio is up on this. Don Lemon was fired from CNN. Uh, He was also credibly accused of sexual assault. I believe that case went away. Uh, Can't say why or why not. It's always odd when victims uh, drop their cases against sexual assaulters. Maybe, Maybe the person wasn't telling the truth. Maybe they were paid off. We don't know what happened. Who knows? But uh, Don Lemon, incredibly accused at one point of sexual assault, was fired from CNN. Uh, is like kind of per- persona non grata there. And he sat down with Elon Musk. Elon gave him an interview because he was on X. And he was like, hey, you know, if I gave an interview to Tucker Carlson uh, and, and Elon is pretty, pretty liberal with the interviews that he gives, uh, why not give one to Don Lemon? What could go wrong? Well, a lot. Here we go. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? That you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the Great Replacement Theory? Is so let's let's start right there. That you wouldn't have to answer questions from reporters. This is Don Lemon, who uh, is arrogant. In case you didn't know, and and probably uh, probably no, actually very difficult to work with, according to a lot of people at CNN. Remember when he berated his uh, female hosts too, talking about who was out of their prime and whatever past their prime and whatnot. Uh, and, and apparently he can't get along with anyone. They had demoted him from having the Don Lemon show at CNN. There's the Don Lemon show there or whatever. Don Lemon tonight put him on the morning show and then he got tanked altogether. So he believes and he's arrogant enough to believe that people like Elon Musk, here's a guy who has revolutionized electric vehicles. Uh, basically, I don't even think NASA exists anymore. I think it's just SpaceX. Now, I don't, I don't know what NASA does. They give DEI training and then SpaceX launches everything in space. Uh, he set a record, by the way, yesterday, did Elon Musk by sending a 40-story rocket, the largest rocket ever into space, successfully. Uh, Don Lemon sits down with him and believes that Elon Musk must answer to the press as if the press, he's a private citizen as Elon Musk, he's not a government official, as if the press has some sort of authority over Elon Musk. Uh, that's his first problem here. And the arrogance continues. I'm going to start that clip again. Do you believe that X and you have some responsibility to moderate hate speech on the platform? That you wouldn't have to answer these questions from reporters about the Great Replacement Theory as it released? I don't have to answer these questions. Great Replacement. Correct. Correct. And here goes Elon Musk laying into him. He doesn't have to answer anything for these people. It's not a court case. They are no authority. They have no authority over him. He does not have to answer these questions for these people. And that's the problem and the arrogance of modern journalists who are just there to push their opinion and fact check things with their opinions. Elon Musk shuts it down. Some theory as it relates to Jewish people. Do you think that I don't have to answer questions from reporters? Again, he doesn't have to answer the questions. He knows this. He's smarter than Don Lemon. I mean, most rocks and small animals are smarter than Don Lemon. But here we go. Don, the only reason I'm doing this interview is because you're on the X platform and you asked for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Otherwise, I would not do this interview. So you don't think do you think so, by the way, so he's responding to uh, you didn't think you would have to answer questions as if there's some sort of authority. And the only reason that, again, Elon's sitting down with him is because he's trying to be a good steward to people that are on his platform. Don Lemon has his own show similar to Tucker Carlson. And he figured, hey, let's give the guy a chance. I'll do the interview to be a good steward of my platform. So you don't think you do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble or you wouldn't be criticized for? You, you see, hold on. That's the line that really gets me. 
And then it gets worse, by the way, when they go in studio with Don Lemon. And we'll get to that in a second. But what gets me here is that Don Lemon says, you didn't think you'd get in trouble? With who? With who is 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 Elon Musk going to get in trouble with? Like who who is who is this person? Oh no, not the not the lefty journalists. How dare uh, I don't want to screw them up. I don't want to screw up. I don't want to screw up my uh my my opinion of them at their little cocktail parties. Credibly sexually accused uh, sexually assault uh, accused of sexually assault uh, it was it was Don Lemon by the way. So uh, maybe they should have asked questions about that. But no, that's the problem with modern journalism is that he believes Don Lemon is coming at this as if he has some sort of authority over one of the richest men on the planet who has revolutionized electric vehicles, uh, uh, changed social media to make it freer. And of course, uh, they basically become NASA and the the world's it leads the world's uh, most successful space program right now. And he had the nerve to ask Elon Musk. You didn't think you'd get in trouble? With who? I would not do interviews. Watch this. Watch this. So you don't think, you, do you think that you wouldn't get in trouble? Again. Or you wouldn't be criticized for these things? I'm or criticized that possibly. Were... I could care less. Yeah, again, why would he? Elon Musk gets criticized constantly, but this is, again, coming from Don Lemon. Don Lemon literally saying, you didn't think you'd get in trouble with, uh, you didn't think you'd get in trouble with, with, with us? You didn't think you'd get in trouble with CNN, which, uh, Push the Russian collusion for a while and clearly just lies about whatever they want to lie about with people they don't like. Well, it's not even CNN. The guy's unemployed. The guy's completely unemployed is Don Lemon. I, I again, what is this supposed to be? So here he is. Hold on. So here's Don Lemon in the studio. And this is where it gets really fun to watch, by the way. We're going to get to it in a second, but this is what's really fun to watch. Again, remember, CNN fired this guy because he was a dick to everyone that was around, and he was worthless and couldn't move numbers. Maybe maybe some conservative outlets should pay attention to that and get rid of the, the dicks that they have that can't move any numbers at their stations. You think all of these people are good? They're not. That's my, uh, that's my balancing it out commentary today with, uh, with conservatism. But here's... <laughs> Don Lemon, you, again, just, just this is, gets even more ridiculous. Illuminating in so many ways. All right, I have two, I have two things I want to ask you about that, Don. First, look at this smug piece of shit. The great replacement theory. Right. As you bring it up, um, you know, he has tweeted, um, a tweet he shared, increasing illegals boost Dem voting power, causing them to recruit more. Mm -hmm. If Dems win President, House, and Senate, they'll grant citizenship to all legals, and America will become a permanent one-party deep socialist state. Well, that's true. That's true. How are they trying to say that's a conspiracy? This is a, a network that pushed Russian collusion, trying to deny. They, they were all election deniers for the 2016 election. Uh, they're saying, and hey, shout out to ALX for getting on this. Uh, how is that not true? That's what they're doing. Democrats are calling illegal immigrants newcomers. They're trying to get rid of voter ID for a reason. They're trying to make sure that they, they're trying to fast track citizenship, fast track citizenship, so that they can all vote. So here we go. By counting illegal aliens in the census, it incentivized Democrats to continue the invasion in order to build up power. That's what ALX tweeted. Uh, correct, by the way, 100% correct. And Elon Musk saying exactly increasing illegals boasts boast Dem voting power, causing them to recruit even more. If Dems win President, House, and Senate, even though seats to overcome filibuster, it, with enough seats, sorry, I can't read this morning, uh, to overcome filibuster, they'll grant citizenship to illegals and America will become a permanent one-party deep socialist state. That is completely true. That is like, And, and they're trying to say, oh, that's, a, that's just a conspiracy theory. That's just a conspiracy That's not real. It's a thousand percent true. That's exactly what the plan is. That's why they're not declaring it a, an emergency on the border. It's why they're letting these people in. They're loading up dem areas to give them more voting power in the House and maybe turn these people into voters. That's why they're calling them newcomers. But no, all oh, that's just a conspiracy. That's just a conspiracy theory. Bullshit. Right. He has gone there directly. Uh, how much does he stand by 
these ideas. Well, he didn't quite seem to understand that he did uh, originally. He did that with Jewish people, sort of a great replacement. Here we go. By the way, here we go again with like everything is anti-Semitic. They're just going to throw throw all of the ists and phobias at the wall. The theory thing that he did with Jewish people, and he got in trouble, and he had to go to Auschwitz and and answer questions and and apologize and go with Ben Shapiro. But um, he doesn't understand that that sort of rhetoric that he talks about the great replacement theory and um and a migrant invasion that's what radicalized shooters use in their manifesto can you again this is effing ridiculous now this is how crazy this gets don lemon goes from hey i want to have an interview with elon musk it's no wonder elon musk uh cut the interview short The whole point of it was to try to blame Elon Musk for mass shooters. This this is lunacy. It's not, it, he wants, it, number one, to show authority. That, again, he must be trying to get points with somebody here. All right, by the way, Don Lemon looks pretty sick. Looks like he has blood disease. He's trying to get points with somebody here. Because he's trying to say that the media has the authority over Elon Musk, and now, oh, that's what uh, that's what mass shooters are using. They use Elon Musk's words. They they tried this shit at ABC. They called me up after one of these mass shootings, and and uh, one of my friends there, a producer at ABC, and said to me, "Oh, hey, the guy, uh, the guy liked a couple of your tweets." I go, "I don't care." I actually said many, many choice words to my friend. I don't care. I have almost a million followers on Twitter right now, or X or whatever you want to call it. I have about 1.5, 1.6 million people. Do you think all those people are good people? I don't care. I don't control what they do. People have personal responsibility. How are you trying to link people to to me? But this is their game. Oh, your words are violence because somebody else liked your words. Don Lemon is a socialist, Marxist, whatever you want to call it, left-wing, communist. He's trash. CNN knew he was trash. That's why they fired him. And this is the trash that they're trying to push. I wonder who paid him to try to go after Elon Musk. Probably China. Why not? Why wouldn't you? Speaking of communist trash, though, I I don't want to just leave it with one communist trash person. Uh, Why would we do that? Uh, Bernie Sanders this week wanted everybody to work as little as him or get a little closer to working as little as him. He proposed a 32-hour work week, a national 32-hour work week. We want to increase the minimum wage. We want to make it a 32-hour work week. By the way, we're just going to automate every McDonald's and get it over with. That's where, that's where this goes. But Bernie Sanders announced a 32-hour work week he wanted to pass. And uh, here's Fox Business trying to ask him questions about it. And he's just a, I, I almost feel like he's a clueless old man. Oh, there's a guy walking next to him with a mask, even more laughable. But here's a clueless old man who is just grumpy and yelling about things. Can I talk to you about the 32-hour work week? Yeah. It seems like with Fox Business. Go with whom? It seems like Democrats want businesses to be taxed more, pay their really? workers. That- yes, they do. It seems like Democrats want businesses to be taxed more. And he immediately snaps and goes, really? Is that what we want? It's like with Fox Business. Yeah. It seems like Democrats want Businesses to be taxed more, pay their really? workers. Really? Is that what you think? <laughs> pay their, oh, pay their workers. Excuse- Is that what you think? No, that's what they say. God, he has to smell like just mothballs. Excuse me. I didn't excuse get to ask me. a question. And he's like putting his hand in her face. This guy, this old bag. Okay, thank you. Uh, Senator. He didn't even get to answer a question. He, that's what you think? You think Democrats want to tax businesses more? They do. And then he tries to walk away. He's not, t- by the way, he's walking to the steps like he takes steps. Uh huh. You want to hold it. Okay. We held a hearing on a 32 hour work week because what we have seen is that over the last 50 years, despite a huge increase in worker productivity, almost all of the new wealth has gone to the top 1%. What does that have to do with anything? They're still beating the drum on this top 1%. He's top 1%. All the money's gone to the top 1%, so the people need to work less. That doesn't make any sense. People should be lazier because uh, there are rich people? So everyone else should stop working? Well, 60% of the people living paycheck to paycheck. 
Many of our people are exhausted. People are living paycheck to paycheck because of inflation, by the way. Oh, our people are, many of our people are exhausted. That's what happens when you work a 40 hour work. I'm exhausted right now. I'm up doing a podcast. I'm very exhausted, but I'm working. Our people are exhausted. We work the longest hours of any people in the industrialized world. Not true. Not true. You should talk to the uh, the slave children who are pulling uh, all of the minerals to uh, have your electric vehicles work. I think it's time for a short and work week. Can I ask you a question about that? It seems like Democrats want businesses to be taxed more, really? pay, no, pay, their, my pay their workers. That's not your assumption. It's literally, again, this guy's just going to yell at her. Dude, his breath has to reek. God bless this reporter for getting that close to him to ask questions. But uh, he's literally just trying to out yell. That's what you think, that we want to tax businesses more? Yeah, it's exactly what you're doing. There's more, lower prices, no, and now pay Democrats, people not to work. You know what I would like to see? I can How are businesses going to survive that? That's the well, question. I, How can businesses well, survive I all of those it, proposals? When Mr. Bezos pays an effective tax rate lower than the average worker, I think we have a real problem in our tax system. I think that billionaires have got to stop paying. Their this, again, this trash about billionaires need to pay more money. Bernie smells old and crusty. Correct. <laughs> Jeff Bezos, he, he, he's not taxed enough. By the way, he's already made all of his money. He's not making money. He, he also doesn't, he doesn't make money like a normal worker. His income is different. His income comes from investments. It's a totally different tax bracket. There are different things that go on. He also creates thousands, if not... Uh, uh, I tens of thousands of jobs in the country that create more taxes, but we don't look at that. We have to look at them individually. Uh, and I'm not saying I even agree with Jeff Bezos, but just look at it logically. But over and over again, here's Bernie Sanders over and over and over again. She asks a logical question. How, how are uh, Democrats? She starts by saying Democrats are trying to tax businesses more. Uh, they're trying to get them to lower the price of things. How are businesses supposed to survive? And he's just going to shout her down because he has nothing to combat it with. We work the longest hours of any people. I think it's time for a short and work week. Can I ask you a question about that? It seems like Democrats want businesses to be taxed more, really? pay, no, pay, their, pay their workers more, so. lower prices, no, think, and now pay Democrats, people not to work. You know what I would like to I would have yelled at that old, that old SOB. I would have lost it. He deserves no respect from her. And I, I don't understand why she didn't just yell back. Why don't you answer the question then? You can't answer the question. You're just going to try to shout me down. She should just call it out. Break the fourth wall on this stuff. All right. Uh, what else is there? Oh, here we go. Let's see if this is... Uh, I'm not going to take down... I have another story I have to... I want to get to here. Uh, and uh, there, I had a local news channel pulled up, but they want to have uh, ads. I have my ad blocker on, so I'm not going to pull it up. Uh, I didn't know who this was. This is an Alex Spencer, the fiance, told me about this because I, I am again. Maybe I'm just becoming an old man. Uh, Olivia Rodrigo, I, I've seen her in like commercials or something. I have no clue. I can't name a single one of her songs. I can even name what, what's the one the uh, the boy band with like the seven Korean guys. Some of them look trans. I can name the one. They got that one song, Dynamite. Sing. I know pop culture. But uh, this is uh, Olivia Rodrigo apparently handing out contraceptives. She was handing out Plan B. Who's going to see? Obviously, like, okay, look, I know I'm not totally, you know, out of pop culture and paying attention to things here. So I know who certain people are. But uh, Olivia Rodrigo, this is like a t teenagers go to see her, right? Got to be like 12-year-olds giving out Plan B to 12-year-olds. Uh, contraceptives and morning after pills have been handed out at U.S. pop star Olivia Rodrigo's concert in Missouri uh, where abortion is banned. Concert goers could pick up free condoms and emergency contraception kits uh, from stands at venues in St. Louis last month. The Drivers, the drivers License Singer, I guess that's their song, launched the Fund for Good campaign, a global initiative for people seeking reproductive health freedom. Birth control, such as morning after pills, are legal in the United States. Don't you need, like, a, I, children shouldn't have access to them, though, right? Like, 12, 13-year-olds, they should not be getting, if you take these, couldn't it really screw you up? You can't just hand those out to kids. Uh, a proceed, uh, a, a proceed of profits from Rodrigo's tour, which is partnered with the National Network of Abortion Funds, will go towards Fund for Good. 
so again, a uh, portion of the proceeds, I believe, is what that's supposed to be. I, I guess it's BBC says it differently. A uh, portion of the proceeds goes to the National Network of Abortion Funds because no, you you know, uh, she she doesn't have enough twelve year old fans, or maybe she does have enough twelve year old fans. And uh, th- she's going to try to give out Plan B to her fa- her twelve and thirteen year old fans. I don't understand. Like this is again the illogical. She, there's. I, I wonder if she gives like a talk in the middle of her crappy songs at her concerts. That's like, hey, hey, twelve year olds, when you get pregnant, you're stuck in t- in places like Texas. Not like, hey, you know, let's just sing some songs and have a good time. I know nothing about. Uh, I know nothing about her, other than she's giving out Plan B, which can't be good for kids. I mean, literally, can't be good for kids. Why? It just, it's, no, no. Here's the, uh, by the way, I'll show you the, they made them look cool. Look at that. Um, There you go. Some sort of, they made them look like, I'm I'm not going to pay for your, uh, your your window there. Uh, But uh, there's, uh, they, there you go. You want some, I think, did I, did I share that? I don't know. Maybe I, nope. I guess I'm talking to myself on that one. Uh, it opened in another window. I'm still learning. Uh, oh, it's popping up in a different window. But they 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 made him look like little schnazzy. Uh, let me see if I can show this. Olivia. Ron, because it. Images. I mean, that is that is. Uh, what happens when kids take plan B when you've got 12 year olds taking plan B and they, <laughs> by the way, somebody in the comments is upset that I called BTS trans shove it. Oh no, you unfollow me. Oh no. Bye. Uh, so <laughs> they're uh, like lady boys. There you go. They look like lady boys to me. That's all deal with it. I don't understand why, and again, how how it's legal to hand out Plan B to kids. I, I just I, there's something there's something really gross about that. There you go. There's a million. There's a different picture of her. Uh, is that her covered in blood from the uh, the Grammys or whatever? Didn't she do some sort of like people thought it was a blood ritual or something at the good Grammys? It's gross that you're giving out that. Uh, Plan B to children. Puke. There ha- again, like that just, it, I, I couldn't imagine. Like, I, I understand, like, I even understand, like, someone having a different opinion on uh, abortion than me. I mean, I don't like their opinion, but handing out uh, contraceptives to like 12 and 13 year olds at your, your concerts? It's weird. Super weird. All right. Last story of the day. Uh, this one should go without saying how ridiculous it is. Uh, New Yorkers on rail are losing battle against uh, crime. Wow. After uh, Governor Hochul dispatches the National Guard, number one, they were sent. Remember uh, when when the left said that we shouldn't be sending the military to be police officers? When Trump was trying to send the military, I believe, to the border, they freaked out. They were like, the military can't be police. How dare you? Now, uh, apparently, New Yorkers are realizing that there's a uh, massive spike in crime. Also, by the way, uh, maybe if you let people defend themselves on subways in New York, there wouldn't be a massive spike in crime. If if criminals thought that there was some sort of uh, uh, repercussions repercussions to repercussions. Where am I at this morning? Here, hold on. Let me drink some coffee. Repercussions to their actions. Maybe they would uh, stop crime a little bit more maybe they'd slow down maybe they'd think about it but they, they it, when somebody defends themselves on the subway they're the people who go to jail not the criminals and that's the way it is in new york so hey i wonder what happens even with the national guard standing around because you can't what's the national guard going to do stop crime on trains stop uh, again they're going to search bags occasionally that's not going to slow things down uh this is from fox news new york subway riders are weighing in after governor kathy hochel sent the National Guard and state troopers to help NYPD secure Big Apple subway stations amid fears of crime and chaos. 
Many support the move after a recent mayhem included surveillance video showing a man in Manhattan subway station hurling flaming cans at people through a turnstile. What? I mean, random shoving attacks. Yeah, again, kids go push people around and punch people. What man throwing flame? Man, yeah. Subway. Let's see. There we go. Uh, we've got the NBC report on this. Grow your bits. All right, we're gonna let. Look at that, Microsoft. There we go. All right. Stalker on the subway. A He's group got of people. cans that are on fire. He's literally got cans on fire. What is cooking? What the hell? Attacked by a stranger with fire. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Gilma Avalos. I'm Adam Cooper. Street stop in Chelsea along the one line. I am. Let me say that. that This dude just comes in and obviously they're doing nothing about it. He's just throwing line, cans of. Police say that group was just standing on the platform when two flaming cans came flying their way. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but that guy who did it, he is still on the loose. Yeah, why Why would he be arrested? Why would they be able to find him? Holy crap. Did you guys know about the story? I did not know about the story. Sorry, this is now taking me off the off the rail. Yeah, this was checking back for this live in Chelsea. Yeah, hey, she's going to ask people, hey, uh, when, when you ride on the subway, do you like having flaming cans thrown at you? And they're going to be like, no. And, you know, here we're looking at Checky, another random attack on the subway. Yeah, you have a mental illness problem in New York City, and you guys keep feeding into it. What do you think's going to happen? You're lucky it was just flaming cans. Another random attack indeed, Adam. And, you know, we've seen some crazy things in the subway, but this one is right up there. Can you imagine standing? <laughs> I have you watched the woman in the back doing all sorts of sexual stuff. <laughs> oh, I love New Yorkers. If you watch the lady in the white with the black jacket in the back, uh, and if you're listening to this, sorry, you don't see it. She's doing all sorts of stuff uh, behind the reporter's back. Down here and seeing some guy with uh, fire in his hands and then him throwing it at you. Uh, luckily, the camera's right here behind me captured it. Happened. Yeah, the, ca the camera's behind you caught it, but that didn't save anybody. Let's take a look at that video again, showing that man uh, basically walking up to the turnstiles with the two canisters of fire in his hand. Um, and oh, she's laughing. She's laughing at it. This is supposed to be a serious reporter. She thinks it's hilarious. We say after that video stops, he actually threw it at a group of people who were standing on the other side. Police say that was unprovoked, that those people had not done anything to the man. But Oh, well, but if it would have been provoked, uh, then maybe he could have brought the flaming cans onto the onto the subway. You know how that goes. You know, if they would have been provoked, if they would have said something to him, then then in that case, you know, it, it's OK to bring the, the old flaming cans on. But uh, he wasn't provoked. So for some reason, he targeted them uh, that fortunately, though, no for some reason, mental illness. No one was hurt or injured as a result of this. Uh, and again, that guy got away. Take a listen to what uh, riders here had to say when we showed him the video. That's crazy. You know, I don't even know what to say. You can't just do this to kill people like that. No, 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 no. You just want the random. That's it. And you could see what the man was wearing there pretty clearly. Uh, but police, in addition, gave this description of him wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't describe him as white. Um, underneath a black jacket, black pants and black. Well, we'll find him because, you know, days later, he's still wearing the exact same outfit. He's wearing a hoodie with a black jacket. And he's still wearing the same outfit. If you, if you just happen to see that guy wearing the exact same outfit days later. Uh, thanks for the description, cops. Black sandals. This happened on February 5th. Oh, he wore sandals when he was throwing the flaming cans. You got to be careful with that. You got to wear close, close toe shoes. I'm surprised they didn't give him the, uh, the update on that from the FDA and why they didn't weigh in on that. It's unclear uh, why we're just hearing about it now. Live in. Yeah, again, these people aren't keeping people informed. It's it, what a mess. What a total mess. I don't know why people would continue to live in major cities like New York. I have. Yeah, that's really a, okay. There we go. That's a good comment. Don Lemon would have said it was Elon's fault. Yeah, if somebody would have caught on fire with the flaming can, somebody would have. Uh, Don Lemon would have blamed Elon Musk. That's the great replacement theory. Your your great replacement theory lies, or why uh, people are throwing flaming cans on the uh, New York subway.
insane. Insane. And that's where we are right now. So what are you going to do? Move out of those cities. That's what I would say. I enjoy the country here in, in Texas. It's a great place. Very nice. I live in a little, uh, little wine area here in, in Texas. Not drinking that right now. I've got my, uh, my Scooter's Coffee. They're not a sponsor, but my Scooter's Ice Coffee every morning to wake up. All right, here we go. That is going to be it for this podcast powered by American Greatness. I'm Tim Young. It's the Tim Runs His Mouth podcast here. You can watch it everywhere. Podcasts are placed. I know they used to say books. You can buy books anywhere they're sold or whatever it was. Uh, but it's the American Greatness podcast. Uh, the Tim Runs His Mouth podcast with American Greatness. I'll get it right at some point. I want to thank our sponsors again, ScarsDirect.com. You can go follow me at Tim Runs His Mouth. Like, share, subscribe. Hang out with me all morning long, every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. And you know what? I will make fun of people like BTS when people are very upset about my stupid jokes about BTS. I'm leaving now. I'm unfollowing you because you made fun of a weird boy band that all looks like girls. <laughs> the Tim Runs His Mouth podcast. Um, go follow American Greatness. They've got great articles over there. Go to cigarsdirect.com. Again, I'm Tim Young, if you didn't know that already. Thanks for hanging out with me. As always, I will see you next time.